So continuing on with this, uh, if we, there's an important condition on the velocity uh, in incompressible flow. This is from 3.6 of Anderson, um, which is that if we write math conservation, which is the rho dt plus rad dot rho v plus zero for constant density, which we have an incompressible flow, immediately, and the steps are in the lecture notes if you want to see the development, but immediately we get that grad dot v is zero. So the divergence of the velocity is identically zero in incompressible flow. Now, let's move on to the governing equation for irrotational incompressible flow which is Laplace's equation. This is Anderson 3.7. So we have mass conservation, which is grad dot v equals zero. And since the flow is irritational, we know we can define a velocity potential. So we can substitute this into our uh, mass conservation equation and get that grad dot grad psi, uh, sorry, phi equals zero, or just grad square phi equals zero. And this is Laplace's equation. And this has been extensively studied in mathematics, and many solutions exist. In 2D, we can show that the stream function is governed by the same equation. So why is this so important? Well, there are a couple reasons. But critically, Laplace's equation is a linear differential equation. So that a sum of solutions is also a solution. So that means that if we have some velocity potential, this can be a sum of many other velocity potentials, each of which satisfies the governing equation on their own. This is a solution if all of these are a solution. It means that we can construct flow fields using linear superposition. Now this is a powerful tool because it allows us to study very elementary flows and then combine them and linearly assemble a more complex flow field. So, one thing you may be wondering, or, can't, or perhaps can't remember, is we have one equation. How does this lead to many different flow fields? Seems like it should always give the same solution. In general, it does, but the key thing is the boundary condition. So basically, the boundary conditions govern the type of flow field that will result, even though there's the same governing equation. There's really two types of boundary conditions that we're interested in. So one is the infinity boundary condition, and this means that the flow approaches uniform free stream conditions far away from our body of interest. So basically, if v infinity, the free stream velocity is in the x direction, then in infinity we have that u equals v infinity and v equals zero.
The second boundary condition of interest is the wall boundary condition. Basically, what this says is the flow can't pass through a surface of a solid object. So in viscous flow, the velocity at the wall must be zero. In inviscid flow, the velocity can slip at the wall, but still can't pass through it. So that v dot n equals zero, where here's some surface. And if we consider this point, the velocity must be perpendicular to the local surface normal. Now, if we apply this to our uh, velocity potential or stream function uh, equations, what we can get is that grad phi dot n is zero. And this means d phi dn is zero, or d phi ds, where s is the streamwise direction normal to n, is zero. This is the velocity potential, this is the stream function. So, what you take away from this is that the, the contour, the shape of a body, is a streamline. So if the body has shape y, body is some function of x, then there'll be a value of the stream function for the surface that's the same constant value over the whole surface. So the body surface is a streamline. The last thing here is the overview of how to solve problems, uh, or how to solve irritational and compressible flow. So this is a solution strategy. which is Anderson 3.8. Essentially, step one is to solve the velocity, uh, Laplace's equation for the velocity potential um, or for the stream function uh, along with the boundary conditions. And this is usually some sum of various elementary solutions because of the superposition principle. Second is to get the velocity field from the potential or u equals that and v equals that if using the stream function. And then the final step is to obtain the pressure field, which is just the free stream pressure plus one half rho the infinity minus one half rho t squared.